Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm showing how to make a card from scratch with the Cricut machine. I'll be using the cut, score, writing, and print and cut feature. So this video has so much in it. I'm not a big card maker, but I thought it would be a great video to show how to put it all together in Cricut Design Space. So I'll just start off showing you how to do this in Design Space. First, what I'm going to do is go over to my shapes. I'm going to select a square. Now I'm going to size this. I want to make it 10 inches by 7 inches, but first I need to click unlock because if I don't do that, it's going to keep these proportions. I am going to go up here. You can hit unlock right here or up at the top. Then I am going to do 10 inches for the width and 7 inches for the height. My card is actually going to be 5 inches by 7 inches, but I want to do 10 inches because this is going to be the front and the back of the card, and it'll be a little easier to see it once I keep adding to it. The next thing that I want to do is change the color of my card. I am going to be using pink cardstock, so I'm going to go up to the square and I'm going to select pink. That's a little bit brighter than the cardstock I have. You can just leave that. It doesn't have to really match what it's going to look like, but sometimes it helps me visualize it a little bit, so I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter. Then I'm going to add a score line. So I'm going to go back over to my shapes and select the score line. The score line will be the center part of the card, and this is where the card folds. I'm going to be using my scoring wheel on my Cricut Maker to score this, but you can use the scoring stylus if you have a Cricut Explore Air Machine. First, what I'm going to do with this score line to line it up is go up to my height, and I am going to change it to 7 inches, which is the same size as the card. That just makes it a little easier. Now I'm going to select my score line, then click shift on my keyboard and select the rectangle. You can do that or you can highlight over both of them. Either way works and you can see in the layers panel that they're both highlighted. So I wanna make sure this is directly in the center of my card. So I'm going to go up to align and select center. Then it'll move it directly to the center. What I want to do next is I want to attach both of these pieces together. If you would click on make it, these would be separate on different mats. So attaching it will make sure that it all stays exactly like this. So I'm going to go down to the bottom right and select attach. Before I add something to the front of the card, I decided I wanted something to be inserted on the inside so that I can have the Cricut draw something out on the inside of the card. So what I'm going to do is grab another shape. I'm going to make it 10 by 7. I'll unlock this. This piece is going to be white. So I'm going to go over here and select white. Then I am just going to lock this. That'll keep these proportions. And I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller. This will be the inside part of the card. But now I want to add a score line to this also because I want to fold it and glue it inside of the card. So I'm going to grab another score line. And I am going to find the height for this, which is up here at 6.5. 563. So I'm going to highlight over that and I will copy that. I'm just using my hotkeys on my computer. So I used Command C since I have a Mac com computer. Then I'm going to select my score line again and I'm going to double click and I am going to hit Command V and hit Enter. Oops. <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> there we go. I'm not sure why I did that. But now this should be the same height as this piece. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'll hit shift on my keyboard and select this rectangle. Then I'm going to hit align center. Then I'm going to come down here and click attach. So now we have these two pieces. There's one more thing I'm going to do before I start designing my card. I want to have an envelope for this card as well. If you go into images in Cricut Library, there is templates for envelopes. This is what will pop up. 
Cricut does have some free images, so I am going to go down to ownership and I am going to select free, so it will only pop up with the free ones. I am going to select this green one and I'll hit insert image. So here it is. I want my envelope to be white, so I am going to go up and select white. There's a question mark here. The reason why it's not letting me is because the score line is attached to the envelope. You don't have to detach down here. You can just click on the layer of the envelope. Then you can go up and change the color to white. And I want to keep this score line attached so that it'll stay in the right spot. As you can see, the envelope is smaller than the card, so we want it to be the same size. So how I do this is I want it to be five by seven. So I'm gonna grab another square and I am going to come up here and do five by seven, which will be the same size as this piece. Now we have our piece here. I wanna match this up with this rectangle. I'm gonna make it bigger first. I'm gonna send this to the back so I can see it easier. I'm going to give myself just a little bit of extra room because I don't want um, it to be too tight for the envelope, so I'm just going to give myself just a little bit extra room. And now you can see that it does not fit, but you can go down and hit unlock and grab this green arrow here and just size it so that it'll fit. Okay, that looks pretty good. I am just going to delete this. If you look at the size of the envelope, you can see that it's 11, It's about 11 by 9. So if you have only 8.5 by 11 sheets of cardstock, it will not fit with this. So you will need a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock to cut this out. So we have all of our pieces. Now I just want to design the card. I am going to grab two images that I want to use. I'm going to be using both of these images since Mother's Day is coming up on Sunday already. I'm doing this kind of last minute. Both of these images are hand-drawn images available to whoever signs up for my Patreon account. I always have all of the info for my Patreon account linked down below. We are currently up to 89 SVGs. So if you sign up for this membership, you have access to all of those SVGs for just $4.99 a month. And you can also join our private Facebook group as well. I'm gonna make this smaller. I'm going to do this one first. So this will go on the inside of the card. I am going to change this to a draw layer so the Cricut will draw this out with the Cricut pen. So I'm going to size this first. I'm going to move it up a little bit so I have a little room where you can sign the card. I like how that looks. Now what I'm going to do is go up to my line type and I am going to switch it to draw. You can see when I switch it to draw, it turns it into almost like bubble letters. So what I'm actually going to do is just color it in. But if you don't want to have to color anything in, you could also use a drawing font. You can find them in Cricut Design Space. If you click on text and you go up to your font, you can filter for just writing fonts. So go over to filter, then select writing. And then all of these fonts are writing fonts. So let's say we just click on this one. And I'm just going to type out hello. You can see this is a writing font. It is only one single layer. So you can just type out whatever you want it to say and do that. I believe the writing fonts usually cost money. Um... I don't know if there's any free run, free ones in Cricut Design Space, but you can also find some free ones on defont.com. If you search for a really thin font, sometimes you can use those. I'm going to delete this since I'm not using that. The last thing that I need to do with this piece is attach the writing. So we already have 
these pieces attached and you can always tell because it'll say attach in the layers panel but we want to attach the writing also so I'm gonna hit shift on my keyboard and select that also this has tons of layers because it's hand-drawn so if you are new with Cricut a lot of SVGs do not have that many layers now that we have all of this selected I am going to click attach when you come up here again, you can see that it says attached. So this whole thing is attached together, which means it will look exactly like this when you click make it and it is ready to go. Now I'm just going to finish the top of this card. There's one more piece that I want to add to this. I'm going to go over to my images. Then I already have the code because I was searching for this earlier. So I just pasted that by selecting command V in the search box and I'll hit search. This is what I'm going to be using. If you click on this little info, it's called circle. So you could search circle and try to find it. Um, there's tons of circles on there. So that's why it was easier for me just to put the code in. I'm going to insert that into Cricut Design Space. Now I'll just change these colors as well. I'm going to select this. Once again, it won't let me change the color because it's grouped together, but if you just select on the layer, it'll let you. So I have the yellow one selected and I'll choose white. Then for this one, I'm just gonna use the same pink that I'm using. Now I'm going to move these. Since they're grouped together, you can move them both together easily. And I'm just going to size this. I am just going to eyeball this here. Now what I'm going to do is bring this over. I'm going to send it to the front. And I'm going to make it smaller. I'm just going to eyeball this one as well. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit too so you can see it better. For this SVG that I'm using, it's so thin that I wasn't sure how it would cut out. And I thought about slicing it with this, but what I'm actually going to do is make it a print and cut image and I'm going to print it on cardstock. Another option if you don't want to use print and cut, you can also just grab another image. Um, I'm just gonna type in flower. I'm just gonna grab a simple flower even though there's so many different ones that you can grab. You can make several flowers, different colors, and you can cut these out of cardstock and just glue it to the card. But I am actually going to be doing print and cut for this. So I'm going to exit out of that. What I want to do is I'm this piece here, I am going to ungroup. I'm going to send this to the back. Oops. There we go. So what I want to do is I want to take the Mother's Day and this pink card. I want to select both of those and I'm actually just going to move it over so you can see. Both of these are selected and then I am going to flatten these. By flattening these that is turning into a print and cut. The reason why I wanted to flatten it is because I want the Cricut just to cut out the outside part of this. If you don't flatten and just change both of these to print and cut, then it'll cut around all these little pieces. So anytime you do a print and cut, you want to flatten all of the pieces together. For this piece, I just want it to be cut out on white cardstock just like this. We have all of our pieces. I know it got a little complicated with this being a print and cut, but I will show you the whole process with the machine, how it does this. I am going to click on make it. First, the Cricut is going to start off doing print and cut. Then it's going to score and cut our envelope, which we're going to keep it at the 12 by 12. The next piece, if you look at this, it is 12 by 12, but I actually am running low on my 12 by 12 white cardstock, so I actually want to use my 8.5 by 11. I'm going to change it to that, and it'll probably put it on two different sheets. So you can see it now puts it on one mat, and then this one will be on the next. And this one we're doing 8.5 by 11 also. 
I like to change these so that nothing gets cut off. I'm going to select continue. Now I'm going to send this to the printer. I always keep the ad bleed on. It might look a little fuzzy at first, but it actually helps the Cricut make nice crisp lines. I'm also going to select use system dialog so I can change the setting in my printer. Now I'll click print. What I want to do here is I want to go over to best because that will just give it the best quality for the image. Then I am going to click print. I have my cardstock already loaded into my printer and it will print it out. While the printer is printing that out, I am going to select medium cardstock. And if you notice here, it'll tell you what materials to load. So when you're going through all of these steps, it makes it a lot easier to look at this. I am going to be using my blue mat because I'm using cardstock for all of these. I also like to use my brayer tool to press it down. The print and cut image has black registration lines to help the Cricut know where to cut it out. So I loaded that into the Cricut machine and it will read the sensors first, then it will cut out the design. I like to turn my mat backwards to easily get the cardstock off of the mat. Now that the Cricut is done cutting this piece out, you can see there's a check mark and it will go on to the next one, which looks like it is the envelope. You can see that it's going to score and cut, so we'll need our scoring wheel or scoring stylus if you're using that, and our fine point blade to cut. So this step is important since you're doing both. You need to see what it's going to do first, and it looks like it's going to score first. So it's telling us to load our single scoring wheel into clamp. B. And then down here it'll say additional tools is the fine point blade. It will alert us when it's time to put that in. Here is my scoring wheel. I'm using just the single scoring wheel and it will have the number 01 on it. If you have an Explorer Air 2 machine, you can use the scoring stylus, which you can see here. You can actually use the scoring stylus with the maker as well. Then I insert this into my machine. Then I place my cardstock on the mat and load that into the machine. You can see the tool scoring onto the paper here. Now it'll tell us to load our fine point blade in clamp B. I switch my blade out for my fine point blade. For our next piece, it'll tell us to load our black pin and load our scoring wheel again. I switch my blade back to my scoring wheel and add my pin to clamp A. When you add your pin, lift up on that carriage while pressing the pin down. The Cricut will score first, then write. For some reason, I just love watching the Cricut write with the pin. Once the Cricut was done scoring and writing, an alert popped up on my computer asking to change my blade to the fine point blade. I forgot to show that on my Make It screen, but it looked just like the prompt before. You can see I switched the blade to the fine point blade and it'll finish cutting out. So I accidentally hit cancel halfway through that and I had to go back and hide the one, the layers that I've already done. But these are the last two pieces that we have left. This is this piece here and I have it set to medium car stock and all I need for this is the fine point. The Cricut will cut out the cardstock. I'm using the same piece that I printed on the print and cut paper.
Now we're finally on the last step. There is a lot of changing tools on this one. I did not expect it to be like that much, but this last one, it's going to score and cut and it says to load the single scoring wheel. So this will be the last time we load that. After that's done, we'll load the fine point block. Here's one last prompt where it'll say load the fine point blade and clamp. Now we have all of our pieces done so we can put the card together. I like to use my brayer tool to help fold my score line on my card and it works really well. Next, I place my centerpiece inside the card and use my glue stick to glue it on. I'm using just Dollar Tree glue stick. I'm not a big card maker, so I don't have that much glue. Let me know in the comments what you use to glue your cards. Be careful here with the glue. As I folded the card, it started to crease. It would actually work best to glue one side down first, then start to fold the card, then glue the other side as you're folding. You can see I had to pick that piece up and thankfully it did not ruin it. Now I'm going to glue the next piece down. I forgot to pay attention to the scallop edges, so I wasn't able to add the last piece right along with it, but I thought it still looked cute. I glued that down as well. You can also use foam dots to lift up the pieces too if you want to. Now I'm just going to color the inside of the card. Next, I fold my envelope at the score lines and glue the bottom side of the tabs. You can see the card fits in the envelope nicely. Here is the final look. It is fun being able to design a card from scratch because there is limitless ways to make them. My card had a lot of stuff, so let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel if you are new, and I would love it if you checked out my Patreon account to help support me and receive perks such as several SVG images and to be able to join our private Facebook group. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.